Okay, good evening and welcome everyone. My name is Charles Tailandia Upstell and behalf on behalf of the SOAS Library and the SOAS Japan Research Center, I'm honored to welcome you all to this very special event as we gather to celebrate the legacy of Akira Toriyama, one of the most influential figures in the world of manga and anime, whose passing on the 1st of March 2024 has left fans, artists and even heads of state in mourning. Toriyama's work from Dr. Slump to more notably Dragon Ball is for many synonymous with manga. Not only that, his creations have deeply influenced the comics and animation industry and the way in which Japan is perceived worldwide. Exactly two months after his passing, this event celebrates his legacy by bringing together experts in Japanese studies to discuss his work and its cultural impact. Now, it's a great privilege for me to introduce our panelists today, Dr. Filippo Cervelli and Dr. Satana Suzuki. Dr. Filippo Cervelli received his PhD in Oriental Studies from the University of Oxford and is currently lecturer in Modern Japanese Literature and Popular Culture at SOAS. He has written on the literature of Takashi Genichiro, Oe Kenzaburo, Abe Kazushige, on post-Fukushima fiction and on manga and animation. He recently co-edited an interdisciplinary special issue on representations of nerds and loneliness. Dr. Satana Suzuki is currently a lecturer in Japanese and modern Japanese history here at SOAS. Trained as a historian at the Department of History at SOAS, her main interests are the rise of modern Japan with an emphasis on imperialism, militarism, ideology, and the relationship between politics and religion. She also teaches advanced Japanese using current issues in Japan, including constitutional revision, security, and gender. As these issues often closely relate to Japan's imperial legacy, uh, and the post-colonial impasses between Japan and its neighboring countries, she is keen to connect the then and the now in the global context. We were going to be joined by Helen McCarthy as well today, but unfortunately, due to unforeseen circumstances, she's unable to make it. Now, we'd like to start by watching a video. Afterwards, we'll have a panel discussion, and then there'll be an opportunity for a Q&A and an opportunity to share your thoughts and your own stories about how Toriyama has impacted your lives. Although the video we're about to show was created as an advert for the Dragon Ball Kakarot video game, uh, we feel it does a wonderful job of celebrating Toriyama as a storyteller, artist, and creator of many cherished memories. Okay, now let me start by asking the panel, what are your relationships with Toriyama's work, and are you more familiar with his manga or anime adaptations? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. Uh... Yes, so uh, I would say for me, it's the the manga more than the anime. Of course, I've I've seen it, but um, for me, uh, the manga of Dragon Ball was actually the gateway into manga, the gateway gateway in that kind of Japanese culture. And I have to say that looking back on when I started reading it in middle school and then in high school, it is also to a great extent, what prompted me to, to basically make, uh, wanted to learn the language. Because at the time, uh, when we didn't have a simulcast and things were adapted differently in continental Europe, uh, basically, uh, you, you would have the anime of Dragon Ball dubbed in Italian, in my case, and they had certain names the characters. So, but when I read the manga, which was more faithful to the original Japanese, the name of some of the characters were different. So for example, Kamisama in the manga, uh, so God in the Italian dubbed version was the Supreme Being. I would probably wonder that it would be controversial in Italy to call a character that is green God, because you always associate the God with the Christian God. But so that made me like each for knowing like what is the real name of the characters so basically getting a little bit of that another information somewhere else understanding that the the minutiae like that actually what triggered me uh into learning japanese so i don't think i would be in any way where i am now professionally if it wasn't for toriyama's work and you, Satana? Okay, so for me, it's a little bit different because my um, past encounter of Toriyama is Dr. Slump. Because, mm. um, you know, I was born and grew up in Japan. And I think I was about, you can figure out my age if I say this, but <laughs> <laughs> but I was like maybe 14, 15, something like that when I was watching Dr. Slump on TV, like, you know, when it first aired. So... Arale-chan was my first 
um yeah uh connection with Toriyama and um I I really liked this I mean I I read both manga and not I well I guess it's tv anime not like film right and um because I I just read manga from really early, early age so it was it kind of made sense I I had her not her sorry his comics um I don't know, Dr. Slump's um, comics and also I remember in uh, home economics I, I made this uh, embroidery out of Arari Chan <laughs> and it was a masterpiece I was really proud of it but I don't know where it is now but oh. yeah I really really enjoyed the character the, the whole character and Dragon Ball I was already an adult so I was mm -hmm. not in the middle school or high school but also I I think I had the whole you know original comics uh, not the whole thing, but the Dragon Ball at least. So I, yeah, I read really closely, mm -hmm. and uh, I think manga actually <laughs> really helped me with my Japanese. Because mm -hmm. I mean, at the time where we were told like if you read manga, you're gonna go, you're gonna be stupid. <laughs> but it's not true because I learned a lot of kanji because it was like had the your furigana. Mm -hmm. and everything so um you know i would just encounter something really difficult and then i'll look it up in a dictionary so yeah it just expanded my japanese vocabulary thanks to manga so yeah well actually that's a very interesting point because it was the same for me even being a foreigner and learning japanese through that way mm. since i loved manga so much it increased my vocabulary exponentially also because of the furigana right and then also when i was you know, picking up Japanese and when I would meet a Japanese person and talk to them, sometimes if they were a salary man coming to Italy uh, for a short stay, they would tell me, well, yeah, manga, but soro soro so isn't the, the time that you should, you know, leave manga and move on and learn something more serious, but also... If you keep reading manga, you will be become stupid or something like that. Yeah, yeah that's what they said. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And no, it was yeah, it was actually through that that you learn that you learn different ways of speaking, right? And and also because manga is such a huge world yeah. that you get things that deal with everyday language and things that deal in Japanese with very specific vocabulary. Like yeah. for example, I. I learned the word to say cardinal in Japanese through a manga, right? Tsukikyo. <laughs> it's very useful. <laughs> it has gotten me out of uh, more than a sticky situation. Yeah, because there's so many different genres as exactly. well. So, yeah, you get like a history one. And also Dragon yeah. Ball is inspired by myth and, you know, really old novels from a mm -hmm. period. So you, you get the connection and it, it kind of sort of ignites your curiosity as well. So I think it's a it's a... Sorry, yeah, I, I, no. yeah, I really loved it. I mean, I, I still haven't moved on. I still me neither, manga, me so. neither. <laughs> so I probably spend one third of my salary okay. <laughs> on <Good>. online manga. <laughs> I was wondering, uh, could the panel please tell us a little bit more about uh, Toriyama as a person? What what was his life like, and uh, how did it impact his work? You want to start? Um, yeah, I think um, mm. I knew. I mean, I, I, I don't know when he was like little. Do you know anything about when he was? Small? Not much. I mean, yeah. probably there was one picture circulating in the internet when he was in high school, yeah. uh, but we don't know much. Yeah. Uh, I, I know that he was not like a mangaka, manga artist to start with. He he worked in a design company, right? Like he was a designer, sort of illustrator, mm -hmm. something like that. But um, he could not get up in the morning. <laughs> so he was always late. So he was demoted and his salary was cut. So he was making as little as like, uh, I don't know, newcomers, like or else, you know, office ladies or something like that. So he he was a bit, bit de devastated and that's why he quit the job and he, he decided to become a manga artist. So I, I know that uh, he's a bit of a, what's the word? Not, not a morning person. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he was really, um, he 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 really, he had a really good sort of sense of um, what is it? The, because he was a dis illustrator, designer, so he's um, I don't know. He has a really kind of distinctive uh, style, doesn't he? Yeah, it's yeah. quite clean. It's quite clean. Uh, very big eyes, especially. Yeah. 
uh, if if you're more familiar with Dragon Ball in the first chapters, the, the style is much more redolent of Dr. Slump. So mm -hmm. especially the women, they have all of these distinctive uh, eyelids like that run all around their yeah. eyes, right? And, and it's a bit pochetti, a little bit, right? A little bit. Uh, uh, rounded. Yeah. You know, rounded. You, you right? don't want to use yeah. the F word. No. <laughs> no, no. Or chubby, maybe. Yeah, chubby. Can you say chubby? I don't know. Yeah. No, but we, we are in international context here. Yeah, international. <laughs> Definitely. And, uh... and also, he was a family man. Yeah, he didn't want to live in big city. He didn't want to live in Tokyo. So he lived in Aichi. And he never wanted to leave Aichi so that he could be with his family. And uh, he never, ever was late for the deadline. He never missed the deadline. Because I think if he missed the deadline, he would have had to live in Tokyo or something. So he made sure that he was always on time. Mm -hmm. I thought that was quite sweet. <laughs> it's, it's a good incentive, right? Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, I think uh, that this is not only limited to, to Toriyama. I mean, it, it is also typical of some other mangaka, but even though there, his work was so influential, so massive, he, you know, he, he didn't go out in public that much. Mm -hmm. Like even by looking at the pictures of him online, there are, I think, seven or eight pictures or something like that of him. And his work has had the impact of, I don't know, very, very famous authors that are part of our lives. But even if that is something that we can see in other mangaka, Toriyama, you know, he, he really liked that place. He never he never moved to Tokyo. And he apparently had three kids. he had three, he had kids and he was a family man. He apparently he could really, it, I mean, notwithstanding the success of his work, he does really give the impre off the impression of, somebody who is grounded like he is he's he liked motorcycles he liked mecha he i think he has he even said that he barely watched the anime of dragon ball i think he said i think i've seen one or two episodes please people don't hate me for that it's just that for me it's my work that's it and then i just want to build modules and i want to to ride my bike so on the one hand we have this immense success but then we have somebody who tries to to build a nest i think he 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 bought two big he, he created two big houses in i think it's kiyosu the, mm. the town in aichi where he lived and he was a quiet person family oriented and he apparently he managed to to keep it throughout and and i mean it's quite a it's quite a rare thing for that for that amount of success and uh after after he passed away, uh, many of his uh, colleagues and friends at Shonen Jump did express memories of when they were together. And there is one comment by the fellow mangaka Katsura Masakazu that you might know for Wingman, Wingman, Ade Shoujo, Aizu. But I think he writes like very beautiful characters. Mm. But he's like Toriyama's junior, right? I he can't probably, after him, probably. They also did a a collaboration a few years ago, like a few stories together. And he remembered that when they were both working for Jump and Katsura would have like a lot of personal problems or mm. concerns, he would spend hours on the phone with Toriyama, even many, many hours in a row. And Toriyama was in his house, still writing with the with the headphone, like the, the phone handle on his ear and they would talk. So. It does contrast that with, I think, with the image of celebrities that we have nowadays, because now, now often we are exposed to people that whose work is not even as half as good as Toriyama's, and they are always on the media and they always want to talk about everything. Mm -hmm. And Toriyama is a big example of somebody that could have, you know, uh, had such a different uh, exposure, such a different public life, but. He was always very grounded. So it looks, he gave the impression that for him, okay, he he was a mangaka, his work was very successful, but that was only one part of his mm -hmm. life, right? So that I think- didn't define him. Exactly, human, exactly. Yeah. And uh, there is one, um, I think we can also see hints of that kind of balance in his work. Like I, there is one scene in the first in, um, installments of Dragon Ball where 
Son Goku and Kuririn are training with the Kamesen in Muten Roshi, so the Hermit of the Turtle. And they are doing this very tough training where they have to wear uh, a turtle's shell and do all the chores, like delivering milk, helping tilling the floors. And then there is, but then there is also time for rest. And so they are on the hammocks and the master says, now we rest. Our training is like training, studying, but also resting. And so it, it always felt like in a way through his work, we could see that somehow almost as if Toriyama had this balanced way of life that apparently he he was able to keep throughout. At least this is what we know from news on his private life and from his work. Yeah. And also Katsura um, uh, Masakazu, he, yeah. in his obituaries uh, straight after, I think he wrote this on the day that Toriyama died. And he described, oh, so, yeah, he said, they talked on the phone all the time, mm -hmm. but they didn't talk about manga at all. Ah. Like 90 whatever percent of um, their conversation was about life and, you know, problems maybe, yeah, yeah, yeah. but not about work. And so he described, um, Katsura described Toriyama with four words, skebe. Okay. <laughs> so what is skebe? Um, pervert? A, a no, bit, yeah, bit yeah. Not pervert, but like a naughty yeah. pervert, maybe. Skebe. Um, Kawaii, yeah. cute. And also dokuzetsu, so like harsh, mm. harsh words. And kenkyo, so modest. Mm. So it kind of like sums up his personality. Yeah. Yeah. He he must have been like a really interesting mm. friend to have. Yeah. Yeah. I think if we can show the image of uh, Chrono Trigger, I think it works very well to this point. So, I mean, as, as you, I'm sure you know, like Toriyama was also graphic artist for a lot of uh, video games, Dragon Quest, and also this immense like this dream collaboration that he did with uh, Sakaguchi Hironobu and um, Hori Yuji so the creator of Final Fantasy and the creator of Enix's Dragon Quest and they made a game together right Chrono Trigger that according to to many is probably the best game ever made well uh at the end of Chrono Trigger there is a an easter egg right i think we have the picture later on right which is a message from Toriyama to his children mm. while he was working, which I think encapsulates very well the thing that we have been discussing about, right? Mm. Yeah, this one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of nostalgic. Yeah. Now I have to play Chrono Trigger again. <laughs> <laughs> from the beginning. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I guess we're like talking about Dragon Ball, uh, Ball but you know, you know, can I just talk about Dr. Slump? Yeah, please do. Uh, uh. No, because uh, Dr. Slump, uh, he was really successful, but he wanted to quit after six months because uh, Dr. Slump is just like, uh, you know, it's not like a continuation of stories because each episode had to end each time and he found it really difficult or something. So he wanted to quit. But uh, his editor, Torishima, mm -hmm. uh, Torishima, what's his? Uh, Kazuhiko? Kazuhiko, Kazuhiko, something. Kazuhiko, yeah, right. Torishima, mm -hmm. he he was also like a kind of rookie editor. He sort of said, but you can't quit because it's so successful. So they made a bet and said, OK, if you're going to become um, number three, made like within number three of the, the, the reader's survey, you stay. And he did, so he had to. <laughs> he had to carry on. He never went lower than three, right? No, uh, no. But uh, then he also he wanted to quit afterwards, and he said, "You have to create something more fun or more interesting than Doctor Slump. Then you can quit." So he came up with the other one, which was Dragon Boy. Do you know about that? Mm -hmm. It's not. Um, it's called Dragon Boy. It's about the kung fu kind of. A themed manga that was like the beginning of Dragon Ball. Yeah, it was yeah. short-lived and also uh, we can see uh, inspirations from that even in Dragon Ball as yeah. well, right? The Kung Fu movie. Yeah, definitely. And things yeah. Like that. yeah, so I thought that was quite quite mm. interesting because um, mm. but yeah, I, I think the relationship with uh, Toriyama mm. and Tori, Torishima, Torishima, Torishima yeah, yeah. it's just confusing yeah. Toriyama, Torishima. Yeah, it was it was a very special one. So yeah, yeah, yeah. He he, in a way, he 
he nurtured also Toriyama, right? Oh, when, when he submitted his first uh, bid for a, a manga prize, I think yeah. in 78, he didn't win it, but Torishima saw something he, there. He right? discovered, yeah. He discovered yeah. him and he made him... Uh, because also I, th I think that even Dragon Ball was not the immense hit it became from the very beginning. No. So we know that at the beginning, Dragon Ball is is much is very redolent of Doctor Slump, right? It's more like yeah. Rex, and we have this child that is very strong. Yeah. But I think and it, he was just following Buruma. Buruma, yeah, the, exactly. the, 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 the character. So it, nothing was happening. So they had to make it more interesting. So that that kind of. Um, turned into they made it turn into like a more like a fighting yeah it's, um, i think the watershed was the first uh, budokai tenkaichi yeah. the first tournament but uh, we have a few adventures before then but this is when it is still humor mm. humorous but then it took a bit more i think it jumped up like it took this turn that really found the favor of the mm. public and i think it probably never left first place in Shonen Jump until it ran. Yeah, but mm. that was like the beginning of the sort of like a heroic. Exactly. Yeah. Like, you know, the hero becomes like the main character. Yeah, and he's also... Jump, yeah. that's more lucky. Bless you. <laughs> yeah. I was wondering if, uh, could the panel tell us a little bit more about the historical context? Uh, what was the panorama of manga like at uh, the start of Toriyama's career in the 70s and 80s? And uh, and what and who inspired him? Um, um, you want to talk about yeah. the, 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 the golden era of Shonen yeah. Jump? It's yeah. like 70s and 80s. No, actually 1990s, early 1990s. Yeah, I think, um, like I think the, um, so basically the, um, uh, the golden, the peak of sales of Shonen Jump, it was in the mid nineties. Uh, and uh, this is when he recorded the highest ever uh, sales. It was more than 6 million and a half. And now, I mean, I don't think people read Shonen Jump as much, <laughs> but that is also digital. But so anyway- um, I sometimes read it on online. Okay, I always buy when I'm in Japan. I mean, uh, that, that's kind of very rough yeah, yeah, yeah. paper through yeah. your fingers. It's nothing can be. I, I'm like <laughs> everything here. <laughs> so um, it was a, a, a very different time, like the, the years when Toriyama was working, especially for the shonen genre. So I will focus more on the shonen genre because otherwise we, we probably, <laughs> there's too much to say. Mm -hmm. So the shonen genre, right, uh, it's a kind of manga publication. You, I'm, official, like more or less, thought to be aimed at young young boys, uh, and uh, so that's Sunday, Shonen magazine, Sunday magazine, and Jump, Jump and, and something else, Champion, Shonen Champion, Champion. Yeah, that's right. So Shonen Jump is probably the most famous manga magazine from Japan, and. In the eighties, I think from the mid eighties to the mid nineties, he had this immense uh success like it, it was always successful but those are the years where they published the the most famous shonen ma manga that we still know like today so video uh, girl i then, Light was Gaz, four, Gaz, then we have uh Imagura Imagura Renjiro, Imagura Renjiro, the author passed away captain captain, captain Subasa, Subasa, which ended Su right now oh gosh Finally, <laughs> I wanted to see Japan win the the Universal Cup against yeah. other planets, probably. And Slam Dunk. Slam Dunk. Yeah, uh, Jojo no Kimi on a Jojo and Yu Yu Hakusho. Yu Yu Hakusho. Became, have you seen the uh, the Netflix? No, is that good? Yeah. Okay. I mean, good. cute actors yeah. fighting. <laughs> okay, uh, I'll make a note of that. Okay. No, no, and. Uh, and also Hokuto no Ken. Hokuto no Ken started a little bit a little before, bit before. Yeah, and also right. Saint Oseya. So yeah. these are very, very famous ones. Yeah. And they also helped establish the what is called the uh, the Jampu Sangen Soku. So the mm. three principles of Shonen Jampu. Doryoku. Dori no, Yujo. Yujo. Doryoku. Doryoku. Shori. Shori. So friendship, effort, victory. Yes. So it was... Um, a particular time for for shonen manga however uh when dragon ball came around it 
it did it did take these elements but also and mix to them the next in a different way in the next level exactly because we could say countless things about that one thing that i would like to focus on is that also the role the role of the hero right mm. because if you for example in fist of the north star we have the the brooding hero uh kenshiro uh, it's a manga that i really love for sure but it's different because we have the hero who is already an adult who has uh, seen a lot of grief who is uh, Quite trying to as well. exactly to, yeah. to kill everybody the answer to you know for all the wrongs he has been done is basically to kill everybody uh Saint Seiya is also something that is very interesting, has had a lot of success, but then you have these, the group of boys that they feel they have a mission, some, like they, they have to protect the reincarnation of the goddess Athena, right? Mm. But Dragon Ball was different because we encounter Son Goku, who is just a monkey child in the woods, so he just gets by, right? Mischievous. mischievous uh, and, he's uh, and naive to he, start with. He's naive. It is and actually innocent. Innocent. Yeah. innocent. It is exact exactly the encounter with with Bulma, the the, the intelligent girl. town girl who makes him embark on the quest, and he finds friends. So for him, there is never a sense of ultimate purpose of righting any wrongs. He's the he's a pure child, mm -hmm. right? He's uh, also exactly because he has a pure heart he can climb on the kinton on the on the golden on the golden cloud right so that was different we have comedy we have kung fu but then we start from this uh child who just likes to fight but then goku becomes an adult yeah. so this is this is it sounds obvious but in the panorama of the shonen manga of the time this was something completely new they never age they never age i mean even you know if you like one piece okay well two years have passed but they just got stronger that's it this is the only change somebody got a scar on their eye but that's it right and captain Tsubasa is forever they never age teenage their, their body their body grow oh yeah <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Even, yeah. you know, uh, Detective Conan, he has oh, been yeah, yeah. running for 30 years. Yeah, he's still, he's still a child. Yeah. And, 10 or and, and and you see that the, the, the seasons change because there is the Christmas episode, there is the summer episode. So Conan should be 35 by this time. Maybe 14. Maybe 40, yeah. <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, very briefly, uh, Son Goku, he's a child, but time, time passes. And even though he's still a fighter, because of course, after all, it is a shonen manga, but people grow up, people have to take up responsibilities, people, he, he people gets, age, he, people he get married. Married and have kids. And... They have kids, right? So it is, it's, it is something that we had never seen at the time. We haven't seen much of it even afterwards in shonen genre. So it is not just a cosmetic thing. It also was a manga that, as somebody has also said, he grew up with them. Yeah. He grew up with us, right? So we grew up in school relate. and yeah. Son Goku, Son Goku grew up, his friends grew up and I don't know, some people marry each other. So, you know, you are always wondering why, why Vegeta, why Bulma got married with Vegeta you know? in the first, in the first place. Yeah. But I mean, it's a relationship that, that I like anyway, I wouldn't okay. want it any other way. I mean, I like uh, Vegeta. Yeah, me too. Uh, so it, it was quite a different thing because it was it was not like trying to teach Chaka or we all have to grow up, but at the same time, it showed that it, it is part it is part of the of life, right? So even though it is a manga often about fighting, about spectacular moves, there are also some bits that are very important exactly because they are in this unusual context. So for example, uh, a scene that I really, really like is when uh, in Dragon Ball Z, when, when uh, Goku sends his son, Gohan, to fight against Cell. And Gohan is just a, a kid, basically. And Goku thinks that he's too, he, he will reveal his own power and he will be able to defeat Cell. And so he's watching at his kid and a friend of his, Piccolo, who is very close with Gohan, scolds Goku and says... He's not like you. He doesn't fight for the pleasure of fighting. He He's a child. And maybe you left him there, possibly to die. And you know what Gohan is thinking in this moment while he's fighting? He's thinking why his father is letting him die. And he's just watching this. And this 
for a shonen manga, it is something very, very powerful because, of course, you we, we like the fighting. We like them turning blonde. We like them turning with their blue hair. We like them throwing all these rays. But then here and there, Toriyama also always inserted these things that show that behind the powers, behind the supernatural events, there is a world that moves on, right? There is a world of people that grow up, they fall in love, they ma get married, they die, uh, which is which is a, an amazing combination. And, and also a bit of parenting. Bit of Tough parenting. Love, and, yeah. and now, I mean, I think if, if we see things that, you know, One Piece is very famous mm -hmm. for these Kando moments, right? You know that in every arc, in One Piece, there is going to be this flashback of some of the characters and you know you're gonna cry because there is somebody that either dies of an illness people there are uh, killed by the government and this is one of the selling points of one piece but i think that this combination of like real life real emotions in a shonen manga would not have developed in that way without dragon ball yeah and also i think it's really interesting that um the character like Dragon Ball characters like Goku and people, they they fight this really fierce fights, right? Mm. It's really quite sort of violent. But um, I think it's really hostile, um, violent, but it's never murderous. No, no. Like they don't, um, they don't sort of, Goku doesn't want to kill his mm. opponent. Yeah. And often the enemies, his enemies turn into allies or good friends, like Ten Ten Ching Han <laughs> and also Piccolo as well. Piccolo, yeah. So I think that's like that's why that's you know, like it's quite sort of I think that's quite moving, no? Like it is, it is. Your nemesis become like your great friends. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and often some of the most beloved characters are not Son Goku. Like mm. there are many people like Piccolo, many people like others who who did make this uh this change. It was it was very, very, very interesting. Yeah. And uh, the inspiration that Toriyama had, you know, where did he draw mm. the inspiration from? Is I, I thought that was, I mean, obviously it's Seiyuki, the what is it, the journey, the journey to the, to West, the but... West. Um, you know, um San, no, you don't have this, uh San Sanzo Hoshi, the, you know, the Sanzo Hoshi is mm. the uh uh the the what what is the 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 monk. So that's Sanzo Bulma. Hoshi. Sanzo that's Bulma. Hoshi yeah, 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 yeah. Bulma. Yeah. Um, and then we have the monkey, that's Goku, obviously. Mm -hmm. And then we have pig, Chohakai. Chohakai, yeah. And then we have the kappa, the you know, mystical yeah. creature. That's the uh uh yeah, so so pig is the I I, I would say who would, would it be? Maybe there is a pig, Udon. No, no, pig, uh. yeah, no. I'm talking about the equivalent. Uh can't remember who the who the pick and so it's it must be piccolo no pick no there is gyumao as well check out check out the the closest friends that he traveled with ah kuririn kuririn and one more thing who mm, there is yamcha yamcha puaru is a little yeah so puar puar and yeah yeah so you know mm. so he had the mm. equivalent of those kind of things you know it's like adventure to find something, the sutra, right? San yeah, yeah. So Seiyuki is one inspiration, and the other inspiration is the Japanese one, Satomi Hakkenden. It's the, what is it called in English? Um, Satomi Hakkenden. The legend of the, the eight, eight, dogs. Samurai. Ah, eight samurai. Or something like that. Yeah, dogs, but samurai, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah, just to sort of like the rise and fall of mm. this uh Satomi family, mm -hmm. and they had to kind of find like eight uh, balls, right? Eight virtues like benevolence and what is it, filial piety, mm -hmm. loyalty, that sort of thing. So he was kind. So instead of eight balls, Toriyama chose seven because he didn't want to just copy it completely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it was it was quite sort of um, mm. interesting combination of inspirations, I thought, but you could sort of make a link with it. So at the time, when I, I said earlier, when I was watching it, it was quite fun to see all these different references. Mm. 
because these kind of things mm. were like happening elsewhere as well. Yeah, and I think that since uh, a minute ago we talked about him as a person, I think also looking at the referencing references he used and how is a good uh, is quite telling about his mm. personality, right? Because uh, he said that at the time when he was brainstorming for a new manga, he had really been enjoying the the Sayuki show on yeah. Japanese TV, the one in the 80s. Yeah, like yeah. Monkey Magic. Monkey, 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 Monkey Magic, yeah, that one. Yeah. I was watching it. Too. All right, yeah, it's yeah, very yeah. famous, yeah, right? Very... And also, one other thing that is also related to, you know, the path of learning Japanese is how he he found out the names, he, he created the names for his characters. I think... Because if... Sorry, go on. No, I mean, if you are Japanese, many things are obvious. Yeah. Like for us, like the, who were not growing up speaking Japanese, you would see these characters and think about, oh, I wonder where the name Vegeta comes from or the way Kakarotto comes from or the name Buruma comes from. And then you understand. So all people in Burma's family, they have names from underwear. Yeah. Like his father is Dr. Briefs. Yeah. Uh, her, her son is Trunks. Her daughter is B Buddha. Yeah. And uh, Bradley, yeah, and yeah. I don't know. I don't. I don't know if anyone remembers what is the name of Bulma's sister that we see in Jaco. Uh, eh? uh, corset, corset, or something. Oh, I don't. I don't think I it's for. Uh, but anyway, but anyway, uh, and also and the other things are all vegetables or eat. Uh, the sayajin are all vegetables. Food. Yeah, like yeah. kakaroto is carrot. Yeah. Yeah. Vegeta is vegetable. Yeah, yeah. Yamcha is what Chinese dim sum. It's a tea, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A dim sum, yeah, dim sum. Yeah. And also, what is it? Pua is tea, tea. for tea. Mm. And uh, yeah, it's it's quite. Um, yeah. It's really I don't know. Um, saya is yeah, yatai. Saya, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Because I think I don't know this is very anecdotal, but I think probably the first iteration of a Dragon Ball video game in Japan was that you, there was a thing, I think, sold in Japan, maybe in the late 80s, where you would scan the barcode of products in the supermarket and it would create a little animation. And I think this is something that just came, came up to me now. Or I don't, I'm not sure. I think they introduced that. It's the very first iteration of a kind of Dragon Ball video game. You would scan like a, a can of tomatoes and, and you would see a Dragon Ball-like animation. Oh. Then they started making proper video games and they have never stopped. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it says a lot about also Toriyama as a character because he was working, he was working intensely. But for him, like, I don't know, uh, naming characters was uh, something that for him, it was secondary. Right? Like he, he said, OK, I would just open the fridge. Oh, there is a Tamanegi or uh, something like that, right? Uh, or even when understanding that the race of Piccolo, Nameku Seiji, mm. it comes from Namekuji Namek, because yeah. they have the, the yeah. antlers, yeah. right? So it's yeah. it's crazy, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I thought that was actually quite creative. It is, yeah. yeah. And uh, very sort of fun because <laughs> it's like, uh, it's fun for kids to decipher. Yeah. Right, because oh, carrot. What does it mean? Mm. Carrot. So they could even learn English. Yeah, it's vegetables. Kind of yeah. vegetables. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you think about some names in One Piece, I will never, for the love of me, be able to remember that. Like the name of the five Gorose, like mm. Jay, Gairu, Satanse. How are you gonna remember them? Well, I just did. But anyway, <laughs> but the others are very different. Very because hard. yeah. <laughs> so. So, as you mentioned earlier, Filippo, we've seen uh, global successes in other manga such as One Piece, Naruto, Kimetsu no Yaiba, mm. and uh, Bleach, to name a few, um, which have clearly been influenced by Toriyama's work. Uh, I was wondering if you could speak a little bit more about the impact of his manga and uh, on, is the impact of his manga on the manga industry as a whole. Okay. Um, can I start? Or... Yeah, because I have a confession. Okay. I have never read One Piece or Naruto. Because it was just too popular. And also, I understand, I understand. I had the also, same... Yeah, I haven't got over it. I haven't got over it. Well, so it will happen. Yeah. <laughs> well, Kimitsu no Yaiba is only... Kimitsu no Yaiba hours. is... Uh, yes, I, I watched, I read. And there I you watched. know, right? The no, because day, yeah. I, I had to mm. stay... Um, it, it was during COVID when I went back to Japan. 
um, I had to stay at home for like two weeks. Mm. So my Pokemon Go friends brought all the Kimetsu no Yaiba <laughs> Very good friends, yeah. Very good friends. Mm. Uh, comics and DVD and food. <laughs> yeah, so I can talk about Kimetsu no Yaiba, but One Piece. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. No, I just wanted to make a remark. So yeah. we touched a bit on this already, right? About the combination of elements in yeah. Dragon Ball action. But another thing is that also in the genre of shonen, uh, there were elements that became very popular, like a trope with Dragon Ball. Mm. One, for example, is the one of Henshin, of transformation. Because in the shonen manga before that, you have power-ups, but they were never aesthetic in the way they were for Dragon Ball. Because in Hokuto no Ken, you don't. I mean, the, when the, he learned Muso Tensei, it's something like that. But when they try to give a lore to Hokuto no Ken, and power-ups later on, they made a huge mess. Mm. In Saint Seiya, yes and no. Uh, but in Dragon Ball, like the, the training was constant. And I think personally that it was paced very well. Mm. Uh, and then, well, then, of course, when Dragon Ball transitioned into Dragon Ball Z, Z. or Z, yeah. Uh, then of course everybody becomes blonde, right? Like to so the point then when, when I was turn into Super Saiyan, Saiyan Z, yeah. right? So when when I was watching the anime, then my mom would cast a very casual look and say, "Oh, is, are you watching the thing where everybody's blonde?" <laughs> so this was, of course, an aesthetic power up. There is a the trivia is that basically Toriyama made the trans, made them go blonde because since. The Japanese manga is published black and white. Mm -hmm. It meant that it was much less work of his assistants because they didn't have to color the hair. Yeah. So, but they, 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 there's a technique to make it look like blonde. You know. Which one is that? No, it's just they 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 don't um, sort of make it black, but then it's it's um, no color with some sort of yeah the shade little right. little yeah, yeah shades and it yeah, looks things like that yeah. No, no, I mean. Without color. Without color. Yeah, but there it, are some it's a little bit, little bit, yeah, it, it was so weird because it looked blonde <laughs> yeah. to us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so this is one was one thing. So the idea of a power up has then become a, a staple. Like if we think about One Piece, we have Rufy's gears, uh, which are, which I mean, probably they could be introduced much better, I think, in One Piece. But anyway, anyway, in, in Dragon Ball, this first transformation of Son Goku was was anticipated quite very well, very well, and I I feel it was motivated very well. So this is a transformation that comes about where he gets very when Saiyajin become very angry. So a friend of his was murdered be, before his eyes, and then, then out of this rage he becomes a super. But and that is something that has then been. Uh, taken over by other manga like One Piece, Naruto, and, and other and so other. many others. Mitsu, so yeah, countless, yeah, countless. Because you you turn into something that's kind of yeah. more powerful, and uh, it, it's like a different persona. Yeah, because exactly because here when they turn into a super saiyajin, they also change their personality yeah. because Goku is always very Look, happy go lucky, yeah. right? Super and then yeah. he becomes a bit more dusty. Uh, I just wanted to make another point about this, that, I mean, this is also part of context, but if we think about the medium as a whole, I think that with Toriyama, manga made a, a, a great step into becoming more globalized, mm -hmm. because until then, outside of Japan, manga existed, but they were more niche, they were for people who had an idea, more or less an idea of Japan, they... Dragon Ball was the first planetary manga success where you didn't need any previous knowledge. You didn't need any filter to access it. And a, a very wide variety of people, of readers, both boys and girls, could, could like it because it was not just people kill, like fighting against each other. There was humor. There were um, some funny scenes, right? So then that transitioned into such a huge success, also thanks to the animation. Mm -hmm. But I think that it was only with uh, Dragon Ball immense popularity that this certain awareness of manga as a global phenomenon was established. So it was not longer something is published in Japan, maybe it's translated and maybe it's famous. It was something that 
everything related to Dragon Ball that was revealed in Japan, we had to know it in the rest of the world immediately. It was relevant to us immediately. Yeah, yeah. but right? when it first became very popular globally, yeah. wasn't it in anime form, not manga? I think it also depends on the country. Ah, okay. Because I think, uh, as far as I know, if we think about the English-speaking world, I mean, here, but also the United States, I think... Uh, the Dragon Ball Z was shown first on TV, right? At, at least in the US. Mm -hmm. uh, and then after a long time, people also learned that, oh, there is actually a younger Goku, mm -hmm. but it was disseminated throughout the anime first. But I can say that, well, in Italy for sure, and in other countries in continental Europe, we knew the manga first mm -hmm. because Dragon Ball uh, was published in Italy already in this in two editions when i first read it in the late 90s and uh, it was already the second edition and we all knew it through that and also dragon ball anime was shown by was broadcast by a minor tv station right and I, in japan mm. the dragon ball manga first came out in 1984 yeah and then anime or tv uh fuji fuji tv that mm. was uh, two years later i think yeah so that means it hit globally maybe four years, mm. five years later than Japan. Yeah, something like that. I think I think we can make uh, different cases for different countries okay. because the manga was popularized in continental Europe from the mid nineties, I think. So when the anime became a global phenomenon, mm. many people had already read the manga. Oh, okay. And uh, I remember that at first the Dragon Ball anime was shown in a local TV, so they didn't have as much money for the adaptation. So the intros were all in Japanese. Mm. So we had the first one, Tsukamo, then Dragon Ball. And we, and we thought it was very funny, but we had absolutely no idea what they were saying. Yeah. No, no translation. Ah, okay. Then, then a studio was in in Milan, I think, was was charged with with adapting it. Mm -hmm. Then later on, the rights to broadcast it were bought by uh, the main TV national TV stations owned by Berlusconi, mm -hmm. and the dubbing was the same, but the all the songs were changed into Italian. Right. So, but people of my generation read the manga first. Right. Okay. Yeah. It depends on the country. Yeah. I think. Yeah. yeah. But I think the understanding in Japan is that, oh, Dragon Ball uh, debuted in the world scene through anime first. Yeah. Well, Maybe I, because Japan sort of eyes sort well, of to an extent, to, to an extent it's true, I think. Because, yeah, yeah. I mean, of course, often the big numbers in this sense are for the, you know, related to the North American market. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And there, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dragon Ball was first Dragon Ball Z as yeah. an anime, yeah, yeah, we yeah, see, exactly. yeah. as an anime, and then the Zeto. manga, Zeto. 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 <laughs> the manga <laughs> caught up later. That's but right. it, it is very, I think it's very interesting that for the case of Dragon Ball, we can see different developments in different countries, yeah, right? Yeah. But, I mean, it's manga, anime, game, and also, like, what? The, the merchandise merchandise or, or i think or or oh i think they make something like 18 billion 18.5 billion mm -hmm. um dollars um today Ooh, so crazy. it is uh, a massive sort of contribution to mm. economy like japanese yeah. soft power yeah, it's yeah. just like how big that is yeah and i think that is a very good uh uh evidence of the fact that this, like the later manga phenomena, like Kimetsu no Yaiba, One Piece, Naruto, they are popular, of course, because of their merits, but they are already, they are produced in a system that already is aware of these distribution channels. Because now, now as a global audience, we're no longer surprised that, oh, this manga is famous in Japan as a shonen manga. Or maybe we will hear about it here. We know we will hear about it mm -hmm. here. We know it will be relevant for us. I would argue that before Dragon Ball, that was not the case. Mm. So it was a huge ferry into this system. So I don't think that the fact that we can have a Netflix show of One Piece, that we can have that Kimetsu no Yaiba is so popular immediately, mm. globally, that we can see it in theaters. I think there is a huge piece in this jigsaw puzzle that is represented by Toriyama work. Mm -hmm. If you have... Um, I don't like to say, well, if we didn't have this, we wouldn't have that. I, I don't like 
that kind of argument. But I think that in this case, we can safely say that things would have evolved differently or with a different pace if we hadn't had Dragon Ball, yeah. also Dr. Slump, Dr. right? Slump. And many, dis outside of Japan, many discovered Dr. Slump after Dragon Ball. Was Dr. Slump really popular in Europe as well? Uh, the manga was. Oh, in, it, in Italy, it's quite well known. Uh, I'm not ter entirely sure if it was translated after Dragon Ball or before, yeah. but it was popular also because we thought, oh, it's another manga by the by author Toriyama, of, of, yeah. of Dragon Ball, so it must be very good. Yeah. And people liked it. And it was also interesting because it was a very interesting way to be introduced to Japanese humor, mm. you know, with the, with the well, little, Toriyama humor, Toriyama yeah. with the little poops and things like that. Yeah. And because we had no idea of that. Or, I mean, Japanese kids love poops. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know about the British kids, but when they say mm. like poops mm. and I'm like, eh. <laughs> something well, there, like that. There other guy, right, who is a spoof of uh, Superman, right? There is this guy, this salary man who eats a pickle and he becomes Superman. 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 Yes. And he's completely what? useless. Yeah. He's completely but useless. The S, the S of Superman. <laughs> Oh yeah. my God. So, and yeah. then there was another anime that was made in the 2000s, which is a bit more modern, and people liked it. It was shown yeah. in prime yeah. time. So yeah, but you know, it's really funny because yeah. Doctor Slum, um, uh, Toriyama didn't really want Arare-chan to be the main character because he thought that girls couldn't be main character for shonen comics. So he didn't actually write Arare-chan in the second episode. Uh. And so the uh, the Torishima, the editor, he had a go at him as well. Like, okay. you have to, you have to make Arari-chan into, uh... but anyways, so he he did, but then he kept the main character, uh, so be, sorry, the title to be Dr. Slump, which is his dad, the creator yeah. of Arari-chan, Nori, Norimaki Senbe. Ah, there. Yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah the cute poop, look. Ah, uh, the poop, yeah. yeah. And there is a that uh, I had a, something came up now that you mentioned the poop. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, uh, with, the face. with the face, in one of the earlier episodes, uh, earlier stories in Dragon Ball manga, there is actually, I mean, apart from the crossover between Goku and Alale, but there is also another scene when Goku and his friends, they are held captive by the evil Pilaf. Mm. P and Pilaf. And he's... Uh, his henchwoman, uh, who is called Mai, because the other one is called Shu, so Shu Mai. Shu Mai. She makes uh, she makes a, a lewd joke. She says, because uh, uh, they captured Goku's friends, and Pilaf says, oh, we need to find if they have the Dragon Ball on them. And she says, perhaps we can look, in, we can frisk the crotch of the guy. And then Pilaf turns and said, we don't tolerate this kind of lewd humor in this kind of manga. So he breaks the fourth wall. <laughs> And, uh, and Mai is very upset, so she brings up the poop, and she says, oh, I'm very sorry. And then Pilaf says, well, uh, I mean, I'm citing from memory, maybe I'm wrong, but he says, well, actually, you know, this is a serious manga. The author is trying to make a name for himself in serious manga, and we are doing very well, so please don't bring us down, because jump readers are, like, educated or something. We have a standard to, like, he was breaking the fourth, which is very Toriyama-esque. Uh, mm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm keen to open it up for questions, but before I do, I just want to ask the panel, um, what were your favorite moments from Toriyama's work, be it Dragon Ball or Dr. Slump? I think, Filippo, you mentioned earlier on there was a moment yeah, between... I, I can add another one. Yeah, the yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I I, um, I have to say Arari-chan, because mm. I was still impressionable teenager. And um, I mean, and also the, 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 the first song. I don't know if you remember. Which one is the first one? The, in the... The TV series. I don't know whether you guys had the same. No, we had an Italian one. Do -to -do -to uh, yeah, I, I just I just love the song. I can't remember now mm. because it's ages ago. But yeah, yeah, it's just it's just I thought that was um, and also Ararajan is a a girl, mm -hmm. you know, in mm -hmm. a shonen comic. But I I actually as a young girl i read all the shonen manga as well mm -hmm. and so that i think that kind of opened up yeah. audience uh for you know manga enthusiasts to you know to not just boys but the girls so i yeah i mm -hmm. i really like that yeah i i read mm -hmm. jampu sunday magazine champion all four of them 
and that was a good age to read them really because, good age, uh, yeah, yeah. between those years they they created a lot of very very famous works but i i i liked ararajan and also i liked todai choksen if you know that. which one is that todai choksen uh, no that i don't know um kobayashi yoshinori uh, ah okay okay yeah okay. uh, shingo was, it, was it? yeah yeah uh. Isn't it? That's him, right? Mm. Oh, gosh, it was ages ago. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, for me, it relates to Dragon Ball. Uh, um, I mean, one is the one that I already mentioned about Piccolo and Gohan. But another one, I think, is when uh, we have the first fight between Son Goku and and the evil Piccolo. So when Goku is almost dead, but he he still has energy in one arm and he, he destroys Piccolo. That was, I thought... It was very, it was very important. Also, because although most of Dragon Ball is mostly famous in the public imagination through Z, Z which of course I like, but I'm still a lot attached to the first the part, part. Yeah, child, too, yeah. because this is also the time I discovered manga, right? And it has never left me. And in this scene, it was a big change because up until then, Goku had fought evil people. Somebody had died, but it was never through Goku's direct action. Mm -hmm. It was because, I don't know, Tao Pai Pai throws a grenade and Goku repels it. And then he's caught in the crossfire or, um, or something else, like even um, others, like uh, even the, the head of Red Ribbon, right? Goku destroys his robots and then the robot self-destructs. So it was never Goku actually pressing the button, if we can say that. But with Piccolo, we have probably the first evil character who's all evil. Uh, and Goku actually picks up his strength and basically destroys him with a punch, which is beautifully drawn, is beautifully charged. In the anime, I today for, to, to prepare for this, I watched the anime video. It takes like three minutes and a half to, to, to do this thing. In the manga, it's, I don't know, four or five panels, two pages, mm -hmm. but it's much, much more impactful. Mm -hmm. And it was the first time where Son Goku saved the world, right? Mm -hmm. It was not him uh, doing something and then, I mean, protecting his friends, of course. And then it was the first time He's defeating evil in that way, so that will also have consequences, of course. But it was such a such a big moment. Moment, right? and you know, his uh, he was inspired. So when he had to write evil characters, he had trouble like mm. coming up. But you know, who inspired evil no. characters? His previous editors. Ah, <laughs> that's what he says. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and also manga, the first series. You know, yeah. if you see the, I have it at home. Mm -hmm. Um, if you see the like from volume one to whatever yeah. you see like ah, on the on the on the side on the, right? all the characters yeah. and yeah. it looks it just it's just so nice that it, it it's like a solidarity isn't it it is it is yeah, yeah. So it, friendship yeah. solidarity it's really hopeful yeah it is and, and yeah. it shows Make you feel kind of good exactly yeah. and i think it also shows you that of course, these characters are amazing. They have supernatural adventures. Yeah. They save the world. But also, you know, it's a world that will still go on, right? It's something that is alive, that where people will still grow up, will still get married, have other, other children. And one good thing also in Dragon Ball is that although Son Goku is the most famous character, but we do have the sense that he will never be around to save the day each time. Like... Uh, we have hints about the fact that sometimes, you know, you work very hard, but then you also have to believe in others to save the world. Like at the end of the manga, when he defeats Majin Buu, basically they I take like Majin Buu. Me too. Uh, <laughs> they take the energy of all people in the earth. And Vegeta, Vegeta tells him, he said, Goku, you have saved the world countless times. Now it's time that people of earth take care of themselves, mm -hmm. which, as I said, in a shonen manga, this is not to be taken for granted. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Let's take some comments and questions from, from the audience then. Yes, please. Um, the, the, how has uh, the manga and anime industry changed? How are animators treated um, nowadays? Because apparently, from what I've read, they weren't treated very well. Sometimes, 
That's a really interesting. That's a, interesting sorry. Uh, the status quo the meeting. So um, I don't have exact figures, but I would I can make um, I can make assumptions based on what I see in the industry now. So, I mean, on on the one hand, um, there is still the argument that uh, mangaka in Japan they publish they have to publish weekly, right? With it's no. weekly or monthly, right? Sorry, but those that work for weekly magazines, they have to produce chapters of nineteen to twelve pages every week, which is an enormous amount of work. So there, there are rumors, you know, there are notions, there are inf there is information about that they mm -hmm. are uh, overworked immensely. So even Oda, the creator of One Piece, famously a few years ago, he was hospitalized for a week, and of course, it was never. The connection between him and overwork was never made, but now we know that once in a while he takes a vacation, mm -hmm. so that's a good thing. But I mean, I know that in the manga industry, it is not that the creators are paid a lot mm -hmm. for what they publish. Because it's a good salary, but it's not Only something. Only the handful at yeah. the top makes so much money, especially with anime yeah, rights yeah. and merchandise. It's not that Jump pays them an enormous amount of money, and that's still, especially if they can afford the assistance, because. If they afford two or three assistants to help them, they have to pay them out of their own salary. So it doesn't make them very, very wealthy. They are wealthy with the, when the manga comes out in volume format, how much that sells, uh, views, uh, anime, rights, and merchandise. Yeah. Animators, I think I think we have to, to draw a line to, between those that are now treated as auteurs, like uh, not only Miyazaki and the like, but now we also have uh, very famous figures that direct mm -hmm. anime made for TV. Uh, so for example, I mean, Anno Hideaki is one. Uh, what is the one that uh, has made a f uh, the first seasons of Shingeki no Kyojin? Uh, it's not what Watsuki, it's something, Tetsuro or something. I mean, he is an important name, right? And there are others. So they are quite revered. But I know that mm -hmm. the anime industry also, you know, Japan has a, doesn't have so many very big studios. It has a plethora of smaller studios. So, and they outsource a lot of labor now also mm -hmm. to Vietnam, Thailand. So I think the, the working conditions change differently. Mm -hmm. But some of the directors now, even though at even those that work at TV level now they are quite revered, mm -hmm. so it has improved. Mm -hmm. No, we're not there yet because people that animate and they are not paid a lot, they do an enormous amount of work and they don't get enough recognition. That's true. With manga is a bit different because they are much smaller themes, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, we we know we know that who works on what, right? Okay, let's take a question from online. I'll also say to the online audience, if anybody wants to unmute their microphone and mm -hmm. uh, and speak, uh, so they can raise their hand and I'll unmute them for you. But uh, here's the first question. So the anon anonymous attendee is interested in the international context. He says, can you tell us more about how the manga and anime was disseminated worldwide and why it became such a major, a major touchstone in global consciousness, despite many prior popular series being translated slash localized outside Japan? I think it's the Cool Japan yeah, uh, so do with a that. project uh, mm -hmm. conducted by, sort of endorsed by the Japanese government. And I can't remember exactly when that was, 2000? It was quite... Four, was it two or four? Yeah, or uh, it was there? quite much later than I thought. I, much I, later, I, yeah. It's later than the Kokusai Kao. Yeah, 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 yeah. So 2000 something, 2004, yeah. Four kind of Toward, ring, four, four. Yeah, rings a bell. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but just basically sort of um, disseminating soft Japanese soft power, mm. like manga, anime, uh, food, and what else? Video games. Video games, of course. Yeah, so it's like a mm. like a sort of state led mm. a strategy to sell Japan soft power, right? But I think it had already started anyway. Yeah, it was just. Um, yeah. But I don't know how it actually started even before Cool Japan. It just kind of started to happen. Yeah, it is. Um, it is very, it, you cannot point, pin it down, right? Yeah. I think from the 80s, somehow Japan wanted to disseminate its soft power more. Yeah. So we were, we have anime movies like Akira, they were shown in theaters. Yeah, yeah. But then I think in 90s, it became more and more. Yeah, like, uh, yeah. Sailor Moon. 
Terra Moon, Dragon. It's 90s, right? 90s, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And uh, I think in the case of Dragon Ball outside of Japan, I mean, it, it owes quite a bit also to, to its nature because mm. until then, Shonen Manga, Fist of the North Star, for example, mm. and others, they targeted a specific audience because I remember in Italy when we were talking about Fist of the North Star, only the boys liked it. Mm. And it was because it was very violent. I liked it. Of course. <laughs> uh, but you were, already, have, you were have, already advanced for us. I have home in Japan. No, I love it. Yeah. I love it very much. But in terms of, let's say, mass perception, mm. and it was shown on a very local TV, so that also didn't help because it was shown very early in the morning or very like, or right before dinner. Not the prime time. Not the prime time. Dragon Ball... At the By beginning, oh, no, no, sorry, Seven, Dragon Ball and things that was quite prime time in Japan, but I'm not sure about the in European. Italy. The prime time for manga yeah. for anime is like lunchtime, oh, I love that, like 1 30 or 2. Uh, so with Jap Dragon Ball from the beginning was more accessible also as a manga because it had these gags, especially at the beginning, this adventure. So you could pick it up, it was not just people fighting and bleeding. So at school, girls and boys liked it alike, right? Then, of course, when it becomes more fo fighting focused, it, it's a bit different. But it's not something, it felt very accessible. It felt fun. Mm. And then, especially when the anime started being, was bought by this national TV and it was broadcast that after lunchtime, mm. then this is the prime time for animation. Like, it boomed immensely, mm. uh, also through merchandise. So. Mm. Yeah. Let's have we, another. Uh, yeah. oh. We take the. I think some have contributions they would yeah. like to share, and then we move to the questions. Let's take some contributions. Okay. Yes, please. Yeah, you want to come down? Wow. Yeah, I'm just worried about people from home if they cannot hear you. If, if you speak, you can speak, you can speak uh, loudly. Yeah. If you speak loudly, they'll hear. Yeah. Uh, no, first, uh, thank you, Philippe, for, for uh, giving me the, the opportunity to speak about uh, Mr. Bean and this. Uh, about uh, uh, the 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 role of a uh, of uh, Akira Toriyama influencing So uh, thinking about what can, what can I have more about uh, to contribute more, I I thought about. Uh, my research, which is focused on the underground music scene, mm -hmm. and this is actually a fanzine from uh, it, that is translated in English from uh, that is related to underground music in Japan. Uh, I thought about uh, this page in which you can see there are there are uh, some figures from uh, Dragon Ball manga, and uh, and I thought about. Uh, how the contribution of uh, of uh, Akira Toriyama was uh, was uh, basically in uh, important in distant level of uh, society. So not only in, uh, in in popular culture but also in underground culture. Uh, so you know, that is that is a sign about uh, about uh, experimental rock. But I can think about also other other. Uh, other aspects like uh, underground hip hop, uh, which you can find many artists that are using also samples uh, from from uh, manga, from video games. Uh, I can think about also if you want to go broad and in uh, broad the discourse, we can think about also sports. Uh, we can think about uh, sports fans, supporters who are who are uh, delivering a lot of imagery in uh, from. From Dragon Ball, also mm. in uh, supporting their team uh, in, uh, in, uh, in their choreography. So by thinking about it, uh, I uh, I would like to understand. I would like to highlight uh, how the influence of uh, how the influence of uh, Akira Toriyama has brought uh, has is has permeated into this things level of society, and it is it can. Thinking about we can thinking about uh, how how it can help to permeate uh, popular culture along with the uh, underground uh, with uh, these things these things aspects of of the society and this also can think this can be somehow it 
speaking about me, you can think about uh, how it can also somehow influence for me in delivering my research. Uh, it can you know, how it can continue to to influence my my inspire my research by by thinking about uh, <clears throat> the role of popular culture in distinct art, distinct aspects of arts of cultures. Uh, so so basically that's that is my contribution and uh, uh, I wish to have this in order to understand I like more the the contribution of uh, the reality to society and the and, uh, popular culture in general. Thank you. Do we do we have any more I contributions? Have, yeah. yeah, please. In your eyes, uh, I mean, I mean, everyone as well, like the giveaway message uh, for Kina San's work, like I would say, like Dragon, Dragon Ball Z, in obviously, like our generation, the future generation, to like transfer to our life. What would be the giveaway message? Like, you can transfer it to your life and then obviously, like, work on it. Hmm. That's uh, very, very deep. Uh, I think, Life lesson. Yeah, I think there are many things. I think there are many things. Uh, but maybe if, if I had to, like, focus on one at the moment, I would probably pick up the, um, the, the, the teachings of, of Master Mouton and that in life, we, we do what we can. We have friends. We study. We work hard, but we also we also rest. <laughs> so something <laughs> work work balance work balance. So <laughs> probably people in managing SOA should also bear this in mind, right? <laughs> when allocating a workload, uh, because in, in Dragon Ball there is this levity, right? I mean, people die, right? People Earth faces extinction many many times, but in the end there is always this. Yeah. This, I think, in my, I would say, like a kind of levity because it's like you do your own thing. You are with people you love, and then things will move on, and it's funny that, that they move on. I, I think that would be my yeah. two cents on Dragon Ball. Yeah. <laughs> well, same. You, you, yeah. you need some sort of connection with people you love, and also Doroku, you know, like mm. resilience. I think resilience, resilience is yeah. a very uh, good theme. Um, just don't give up on mm. things, yeah. Uh, yeah. Because you know, and also when well, I'm not gonna, I can't swear, so I'm gonna say horrible things happen. Mm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can tell horrible things happen, but um, you always find a way to deal with it. You you have to find the way that works for you to deal with it, and you do your best, and that's all you can do. We've got a raised hand online, so I just want to give Carlo an opportunity to talk. Uh, Carlo, I've unmuted you if you want to speak now. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Filippo, for um, giving me the opportunity to uh, share my uh, personal thoughts and experience on Dragon Ball and on Toriyama works in general. Um, so, uh, one of my recent experiences with uh, um, Dragon Ball is that, uh, uh, as Filippo said, in Italy, uh, we had uh, uh, great popularity of Dragon Ball in the mid-late 90s, early 2000s, when we were uh, back in uh, middle school, uh, because we are on the same age. And uh, nowadays, um, Dragon Ball is living a second youth uh, in uh, in Italy, I think also in the, in the West in general. And... Uh, thanks also to the uh, Dragon Ball Super manga and anime. And um, so I work as an English teacher at a primary school here in Italy. And um, mm -hmm. my, my students are all uh, very, very into manga and anime uh, today. And um, they know the most famous one, like uh, One Piece, Naruto. And um, the older ones, uh, like 11 years old, they even know Shinjaki no Kyojin, which is... Uh, quite uh, amazing for me and um, so um, at the beginning of the year of the academic year in September one of my first graders noticed a Dragon Ball t-shirt that I was wearing that day at school 
And so that's talking about spending a third of your salary in uh, manga related stuff. So, and um, so he asked me, what's that on your shirt? And uh, it was a t-shirt of the Shenron, the, the dragon of uh, Dragon Ball. And I talked to him about uh, um, Dragon Ball and uh, Son Goku. And he told me that he wanted to, to watch it, to watch the cartoon, the anime. Um, and I thought he was going to watch the Dragon Ball Super anime, which is the most famous one and the most direct way for children nowadays to connect with the uh, Dragon Ball. And um, I tried uh, with no great expectation. I tried to um, tell him, uh, maybe try with the first uh, um, episodes of the anime in which uh, Son Goku is still a child, which mm. is uh, very funny and, and uh, um, I don't know, uh, appropriate for your age because he's a first grader, he's six years old. And uh, I was expecting that uh, maybe uh, after 40 years, because the, um, the first uh, chapters of Dragon Ball came out in 1984, as you said, um, maybe he wasn't, uh, I don't know, still um, of appeal for uh, such a young audience. But uh, the kid surprised me, uh, came back a few days later, told me that he already watched the first 10 episodes and that he was very into that. So uh, the other day, he ran to me, uh, very excited, uh, because he had to tell me that he has, uh, uh, he had seen the episode in which Goku defeats Frieza. And uh, so uh, he started in September. Now he's already at uh, more than 100 episodes into the, uh, the thing. <laughs> so I think that there is still hope for <laughs> the new generation after uh, hearing this from this kid. And uh, yeah. I think that it's um, it's very it's a very good thing that um, and also it defines how um, iconic and how important the, the work of Akira Toriyama is. If still today, after forty years since the first publication, kids and uh, children can still appreciate his uh, his work and uh, can be um, very very um, I don't know involved in the in the in the topics that you mentioned before uh like the the three golden um rules of the uh, shonen jump like the friendship and um, um i don't remember now in, in japanese i'm sorry but the those values that uh, uh, manga in general and particular uh Toriyama's work are conveying um the thing that children even today are still uh, involved into that, uh, I think it's it's great. It's uh, one of the uh, best thing that Toriyama left us, and uh, I think that he left the world a bit better uh, than uh, he found it. So um, that was my personal uh, thought uh, about uh, his work, and um, in particular in, for Dragon Ball, but also for uh, his other um, works. Like for example, uh, you mentioned Doctor Slam, which was very popular in Italy as well. I must confess that I have never read it before, like uh, um, two months ago. I finally decided to to start it um, very, very late. I I, I know, but uh, and uh, I'm quite enjoying it even now that I'm pushing forty. And uh, it's a uh, it's a great it's a great. Um, I, I I have no other words to uh, define it uh, like, but classic so that was defines a classic something that you can still enjoy at every age in every time so that was my uh, little thought about that sorry for the long um i don't know uh talking but that was my i tried to put inside everything i was elaborating through the this uh, panel which was very very uh, interesting and uh um, oh yeah, I noted one thing: the sister of, of Bulma, the sister of Bulma's uh, names of, of sister of Bulma is Tights. I believe. Ah, thank, so, you. Yeah. That, I, oh, thank you. That was it. Tights. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, yeah, that was it. Thank you very much, Carlo. <laughs> Thanks. Um, we've got a comment from Lorenzo online, which is kind of in a similar vein to Carlo's comment there. Uh, and Lorenzo says, "I also come from Italy." And I'm in my late twenties, and so, <laughs> and to me, it's interesting when I talk to Japanese people of my age, and they have never seen or read the manga of Dragon Ball; they just know it by name. But in Italy, there have been countless reruns, and it has kind of become an intergenerational phenomenon, not just for the eighties, but also the nineties and the two thousands. Um, thank you, Lorenzo. Let's take another question from the room. 
Yes, please. Um, thanks for great time. And um, I'm sorry, this is the uh, only comment, not the question that um, I was born in Aichi Prefecture in 1993. Okay. And I was, I, I grew, grew up in the city nearby you. Mm. And, and Aichi Prefecture is a great big and industrialized city, but um, prefecture, but Kyoto is the uh, countryside. Mm. And so uh, there are many happy fields mm. and many frogs are uh, crop. <laughs> so very uh, countryside, uh, rural area. So um, all of my friends and I uh, didn't know Toriyama still live in the oh, really? uh, city uh, because he he already uh, became a billionaire. Mm. I think uh, I I I saw he, he already moved mm -hmm. to Tokyo. Yeah, right. Yeah, he never did. Yeah. But, so um, so so my question is, uh, do you think the uh Toriyama shows uh, possibilities that um. The creator, oral creator, that uh, who who lives in no Western country and who lives in the countryside or local areas uh, can uh, success a uh, global market. Of course, yeah. Oh, he did show that. Mm. Yeah, he was a good example, wasn't he? Yeah, and when I think of Toriyama as uh, in the manga industry, I always remember. Uh, one thing that was uh, in the manga Bakuman, mm. uh, which uh, I really appreciated because it explains very well how Jump works, the dynamics. Of, so I think it was very interesting for that. And they say that, right, there are, cre there are manga creators that they have to put like a lot of effort and minutiously, meticulously think about the plot and others that whatever they do is genius, right? Mm -hmm. And when I read it, I thought, okay, for me, he was talking about Oda on one side, the, the one where everything is so meticulous, and Toriyama. Mm -hmm. So Dragon Ball, you know, anything is genius, anything works. Now, I'm not so sure, because of course, I know that Toriyama put a lot of work into that. It wasn't just ideas or so. But exactly, he represented what, what you said, like the fact that somebody that was not located in Tokyo was, was staying. It's not that he was coming from Aichi, it's that he stayed in Aichi, right? And he, he could have, I don't know, bought, I don't know, uh, half of Shibuya, I don't know, something yeah. like that. But it was very interesting because one thing that I appreciate is about many others of Toriyama is that he let his work speak for himself. You know, we are in an age where we, we are in a pandemic and and the media ask a football coach, what do you think about COVID? We are in that kind of age now. And Toriyama was somebody that stuck to what he did well. He did it immensely well and quality prevailed. So I think Toriyama is a success story that shows us that through the right channels, quality will prevail. Right. And he was quite adamant. He was quite persistent. Exactly. Yeah. He knew what his values were. You yeah. have to stick to it, and you have to convince people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It was not that he. Yeah. He he woke up one day and he thought, okay, Dragon Ball Z, this is wonderful. Like, what well, you know, what what we perceive as easy in the manga was not easy at all, mm -hmm. but then it broke through. Like quality, I think it's a good message that. Sometimes quality prevails, mm. <laughs> right? <laughs> Even if you live in Kyoso, right? Yeah. Uh, which I guess I have to go and uh, on the pilgrimage, right? Take a big uh, yeah. Don't be like a tourist who no. climbs up on the places <laughs> on the pipe, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then I fall to the ground. Uh, mm. All right, we've only got time for one or two more questions, so I want to take a question from online. Um, it says, I wanted to ask the panel their opinion on the fact that the US and to some extent the UK are obsessed with Dragon Ball Z and the power levels while ignoring the humor of the first part of Dragon Ball. Well, 
I mean, I would say that possibly the whole all audiences are are crazy about that. It's not just uh, so to 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 put uh, your spirit at ease. It's not just a UK obsession or American obsession because also Italy. in Italy we were like that. I mean, a couple of years ago, I just had a conversation with a friend. We were like, "Ah, oh, yeah, when Freezer, he's in his base form, he's like his power level is five hundred thousand, and he said, "No, it's five hundred and thirty thousand." And this person is a very well regarded member of his community. So, uh, however, there is this meme about Napa saying it's over nine thousand or something like that, which I think. Americans really like. I don't know, it never worked for me. But we are obsessed about the power levels. I think because, I mean, on the one hand, of course, this is a you know very kind of shonen thing. Like you like strength, you want to know who is stronger, right? What if Goku fought Freezer in this form when Goku is this age, would they win or not? So th there is something that is fun about that. But I think from a narrative point of view, it shows that we love these characters like these characters have have we are have penetrated us mm -hmm. our consciousness so much that for us they they come off the page right like so this is we can we do not only see goku or vegeta or or uh, piccolo on that page in that sense for us they are living characters so we are like what would that be in this situation i think it it's a testament to that, and because it's it's fun. I want to know who's strong. <laughs> I think it depends on mm. the type of battles and mm. you know places as well. It's, yeah. it's not always like a sort of open area. It could be what like you know planet. Planet, the it wasteland, be, yeah, yeah. wasteland so Papaya could, Island. Yeah, exactly. So it depends on where <laughs> right. they are. Yeah. So it's not just all about the numbers. It's all about it's about the uh, the strategy mm. and location and other other factors. So yeah, I'm not too obsessed personally with numbers and power. <laughs> yeah. 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 No. Yeah. Of course. Of course. It's uh. It, it's both. Right. There is yeah. a sheer pleasure in understanding who is stronger than whom but also because we love these characters very much yeah and also it, it, sometimes it has to do with resilience like mm. how long they can um fight yeah. because power could be really for a short time yeah right so and also in dragon ball one one trope of the fights is always that they start and they pick at each other and then one is like yeah you haven't shown your full potential oh you're right how did you understand that yeah i'm already at 40 percent Oh well, then honky or that's or something like that. So there is a pleasure, like sonotedo, and it's how we learn Japanese. Like some of us learn Japanese like that, right? Expressions. So, Expression. Yeah. <laughs> and there was this when Vegeta calls it. No, that's Broly. That's Broly. That's very famous. So, we yeah, we can't stop. No, <laughs> you go on for a, for hours, right? Let's have one more question from the room. Yes, please. Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, so it's not much of a question, more um, a further comment and mm -hmm. building on some things that we have said in the discussion. Um, the first thing being the breaking the fourth wall was actually really evident in how Toriyama would draw the panels. Mm -hmm. So in I I remember this very vividly because the first manga I picked up was the third volume mm -hmm. was the Tenkaichi Budokai tournament. And he literally Goku literally punches one of the contestants into the panel. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah. And he, he ricochets off it. Yeah. And I always thought as a kid, I was like, can you do that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I didn't know this. Um, and the second part being actually is a kind of interesting idea that the way I consumed Dragon Ball when I was a child was basically through the manga, but the Z was very, sorry, Z dot, Z -dot was very yeah. popular in TV and in school and stuff like that. But I, it was always sporadic, it was episodic. You mm. could never catch it serialized. Mm. You had to just sit down and if you caught it, you caught it. So I consumed it through the game. Mm. That's how I was met with that like, mm. uh, series. And in a way, that kind of means that, yes, I, I 
can see in Toriyama's um, uh, show and uh, series, but it was through a bunch of different people kind of collaborating to present mm -hmm. that. Now with his passing, Toyo Taro is taking over <laughs> Super, and he has done since Toriyama retired, but when he first retired, there was a lot of backlash with Toyotaro taking over. After his passing, there's been a lot of support for Toyotaro. Do you think that in Dragon Ball's current state and in going into the future, is Toriyama's legacy is surely cemented, but do you think that people will be able to move on from what is considered quintessentially Toriyama's work? Um, do you mean like that we send off Dragon Ball or that we read Dragon Ball drawn by other people? We read Dragon Ball drawn by other people. Yeah. I think so. Uh, and to one extent, it's not unlike, it's not dissimilar from what has happened to Berserk, right? So uh, Miura Kentaro died uh, one or two years ago and uh now somebody else is drawing and somebody else is directing the stories and people still read it so dragon ball is so vast that you know there are still people that will just say okay the manga ended with zetto right mm -hmm. and and then we don't consume anything else but the spirit is there the drawing is and it's good that is not toriyama i mean toyotaro's drawings are very similar to toriyama to an uncanny extent maybe they're even more perfect than toriyama's ones but you see that it, there is a slight difference. And I think that's that's good. And I think Dragon Ball will survive, right? Because it's a world that moves on. We can argue whether it's better or worse, but it's okay that it moves on. I, I think the world will make peace with it. Of course, as you say, when there is a change with something that you love, people will, will back, there will be a backlash, right? But then through work, I think the transition has, is going very well. Yeah. I think, I think uh, with the way that the show is animated as well, perhaps a little bit, you know, you get different animators in different scenes, but people don't always realize that one scene is actually a different artist, mm -hmm. another scene is another artist. So, and some people will be like, oh, that was animated terribly. Mm -hmm. Like, no, it's animated differently. So, yeah, I'm quite optimistic. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I, I haven't made up my mind about that. Yeah, but I, I don't think it's a bad thing, no, necessarily. There are different things. Right? Yeah, it's different just thing. different, isn't it? Uh -huh. And it depends on, I don't know, audience can make up their own mind, mm. you know. You, you can give it a go, definitely. You don't mm. just uh, rule it out. Try it. If you don't like it, you don't like it. Exactly. If you like it, then just embrace mm. it. Mm -hmm. All right, I think we should finish there. Uh, thank you all for joining us today to honor Kira Toriyama. I think the fact that so many of you are here serves as a testament to the ability to inspire that he had. Um, please join me in giving a round of applause for our panelists. <laughs>